We also need to provide solutions that clearly support the hyper specialization of hospital. More and more clinical centers are more and more dedicated, specialized to one specific pathology or one specific treatment. And basically, they need more communication around the institution, increased quality of care, and again, protect investment. The strategy behind it is connect and share, not replace. So if I give you an example for image exchange, basically the, the solution would consist, for instance, at the regional, but it could be at the national level, and we give you a couple of examples afterwards, in a multi-vendor environment, okay, again, the point is not to uh, connect G solution with G solution, it would need nowhere. So at the regional level, basically, uh, the solution consists in creating an architecture that allows the solution to share images and report, to give an access for all clinicians of okay, K through the web, to also enable multidisciplinary meetings such as in oncology, more and more project, one of the key drivers is typically this capability to share images and to share other kinds of medical information between several uh, uh, healthcare actors, uh, especially in oncology, so that they can make a relevant decision. The automatic access to careers is, of course, absolutely mandatory, and the remote reading. So basically, that will allow the GPs, the general practitioners, referring physician, and outside clinician to access to images and reports, and also to private or public centers to work in teleradiology environment, so that we can actually plug some workflow tools on the top of several organizations to be able to, to, to deal with the reading remotely. On a technical perspective, for us, even if I will not go into details today, it clearly consists in creating within a data center that can be at the community level, at the regional level, or at the national level, in, in creating this data center with, first of all, most of the time, an enterprise master patient index. Okay? The first step consists in making sure that everybody is talking about the same patient. Second, and I will come back to that, I would even say, if there is only one thing to remember from my presentation today, is that everything in this architecture is based on the standard, which is XDS. Okay, so we set up an XDS registry and one of several XDS repository. We we'll come back to that. Security, privacy, and consent management. I will mention it. Uh, I don't want to jump into this debate. I understand that this is clearly a debate in Italy. For information, it's of course a debate everywhere. I will give you some, some indication of, of what has been decided in other country. And of course, on the top of it, we provide a kind of e-health web portal so that all its character can get, get access to it. So basically, here is the architecture, okay? Master Patient Index, e-health document, registry and repository, e-health clinical portal, and universal archive with several application functionalities, allows you to access the report, and of course, all the imaging production, to allow some multidisciplinary conferences and meetings and to allow some workflow on the top of it that we call teleradiology. Short focus, and again this is to me the most important on IH, is IH integrating the healthcare enterprise, XDS. XDS stands for, but I'm sure you're familiar with that, for uh, cross-enterprise document sharing. We believe, and we're not the only company believing that, that XDS for information exchange is going to be to become a standard as important as DICOM is today for images. Okay? Fifteen years ago there were still some doubts around does it make sense or not to promote DICOM? I think that probably nobody today would doubt it. Right? We think that within 15 years XDS will have the same status. Okay? So for all these reasons XDS is Clearly, in terms of architecture support, it is patient-centric instead of the local, I mean, within the hospital or the clinical center tools that are user-centric, which is perfectly fine and normal, okay? It's, of course, dedicated to cross-enterprise uh, communication and it clearly facilitates the relationship in a multi-vendor environment. 
It embeds all possibilities to exchange any kind of format and any kind of document. On a technology perspective, not on an organizational perspective, but on a technology perspective, the IHHDS standards embeds also some notions of consent management, okay, with the BBC, uh, B -B -B -P -P -C, sorry, profile. Uh, of course, it combines, on the one hand, uh, all clinical standards such as that common initial seven, but also IT capabilities such as web services. And basically today, all major vendors, all big companies, go to make sure that they're going to be XDS compliant. It's our stuff. It's a, it's a huge investment for the company because they need somehow to rewrite their solution. But the, the, the funny thing is that as soon as it's done, it's pretty easy to set up. And I will explain to you later how it works. Again, sorry for the presentation. Policy issue. Another key advantage of the XDS architecture is that for image exchange, for instance, but it's true for everything, it allows you to work with a centralized or a decentralized architecture. Basically, sometimes you can hesitate between should I concentrate all my documents within a central archive at the regional level or should I keep my data locally? Actually, if yes answer, you can do both and you can mix both. Basically, more and more right now, we propose some projects in which a part of the data for some hospitals or healthcare providers are archived centrally and some others decide to keep the data on site. Okay? It's a question of former investment. It's a question of bandwidth. Okay? When you keep the images on site, with the streaming capabilities of the die computer we have, basically lower bandwidth is, is, is clearly sufficient. Okay, so both, just please remember that both can be done. 